my name is Jamie. A few years ago, several strange things started happening. It all began around Facebook. I logged into my account one day to find a new message from somebody. I used Facebook pretty regularly at the time, and I had for years. Over all the time that I had a Facebook, I received hundreds of friend requests. I certainly didn't know many of the people on my friends list. I would probably get about 5 to 10 friend requests per week on average, and most of the time I would just accept them. The message that I had received looked like spam. It was like multiple links, and those links were really long. There was no text to go along with the links, and I didn't open them. It was sent from some guy with no profile picture. I figured that he was some spam account, and I accidentally accepted a friend request from him or something in the past. I deleted the conversation and unfriended the guy. But only the next day, I got a very similar message. It was from another user. This time, the user did have a profile picture, but it was really generic. I think it was just a logo of a sports team. This person had also sent some random links. By now, I was suspecting that there was some type of Facebook hack going around and spam messages were being sent. I just deleted them and went on, but they didn't stop. The next day, I had spam messages from multiple accounts. I was wondering what was going on. Then the day after that is when things got even weirder and took a creepy twist. I saw that I had a friend request and when I looked at it, the username was Jamie Smith sucks. Jamie Smith is actually my real name. And I also got a friend request with somebody with the username, Jamie Smith is an idiot. I clicked on these profiles and they looked like they had just been created. Somebody was seemingly trying to mess with me. I didn't know who and I didn't know why. Obviously, I declined those goofy friend requests and I decided that I would not go on Facebook for a few days. I deleted the app from my phone and I didn't go on it through my laptop either. But I couldn't escape the strange things. The next day or two went by fine, but then, one night at about midnight, there was a knock on my front door. I lived by myself in an apartment, and I walked over to the door wondering who would be there so late. No one was there when I looked. The next day, this happened again. A knocking at my door, but nobody was there when I looked outside. The day after that, I left my place to find that there was a picture on the floor right in front of my door. The picture was my Facebook profile pic, and it appeared as though somebody had just printed it off on a piece of paper. This was really starting to concern me, but I had no idea what could be done about it. The last straw was the next day. It was 11 o'clock at night and I was home in my apartment. There was once again another knocking at my front door. Immediately following the knock, I heard that the knob to the door was turned. Luckily, the door was in fact locked. I walked over and looked out. No one was there again. I opened up the door and on the ground was at least 100 pieces of paper with my profile picture printed on them. They were all stacked in a pile. I took them all and went to the police the next day. I told them everything and made a report. Beyond that, there wasn't much that I could do. But surprisingly, after I went to the police, everything just stopped. There was no more knocks at my door, no more things left outside, and no more weird Facebook messages or friend requests. I still don't know who did that to me though. This happened many years ago in 2013. I used Facebook quite a bit back then, but I don't really use it at all anymore. On a daily basis, I would use the Facebook app on my phone and had the Messenger app as well. I talked to several of my friends that way, and when this happened, I was about 19 years old. I had probably upwards of 500 friends on there, which is a lot of people, but I've seen accounts with thousands. Anyways, I got a friend request from a girl named Veronica. I saw that we had about five mutual friends and based on her picture, she looked nice. I looked at her profile page, but there wasn't much there. Just her age, which was also 19, and she had two pictures, and I saw that she had about 200 friends. After skimming over her page, I didn't actually know who she was, but I accepted the friend request. Our mutual friends were some people who I had gone to high school with, but didn't really know all that well, as well as one other person who I didn't go to high school with, but lived in the general area. Not too long after I accepted her request, she sent me a message. I went to the Messenger app and I started talking with her. She was really cool and we hit it off. We talked for probably about a week before we wanted to meet up. I knew that she lived in the area, but I didn't know exactly where. Veronica suggested that we meet at a local mall and there was a really popular shopping center about 10 minutes from my house. 
We decided to meet that Saturday at 11 a.m. In the meantime, we kept talking quite a bit, just like usual. When it was Saturday, I drove to the mall and went inside. It was pretty busy with it being a weekend. I had let Veronica know when I was leaving, and I think she left at around the same time as me. When I got inside, I messaged her that I was there. But that's when she stopped replying to me initially. At first, she told me that she was inside the mall and would look for me. But after that, I told her where I was and she didn't go there. I was standing in the food court for like 10 minutes and didn't see any sign of her. I reached out to her again, but did not get a response. I did see that she had seen my message though. When she didn't show up for another 5 minutes, I decided to walk around the mall looking for her. I figured that maybe the signal on her phone was bad or something, or maybe she had put her phone in her pocket with our conversation still open. I was just telling myself things like that, but I started to get a bad feeling. The mall was pretty big. It wasn't like the Mall of America or anything, but it was a decent size, and it did have two levels. There were also a lot of people there, so it would be tough, but not impossible to find someone. At one point though, when I was looking around, I did see this one guy who kind of looked like he was staring at me from afar. When I walked all around the mall, I saw the guy again, but he was walking a ways back behind me. I walked around for maybe 20 minutes. I really wanted to meet Veronica, but the more I walked around, the more I felt like she wasn't actually there. Then, finally, I felt my phone vibrate. I looked, and Veronica had sent me a message. She said, come to the entrance by the food court. That was the first area that I had been, and I had told her when I was there. I walked back over to it, which took me about two or three minutes. When I got back there, I looked around. It was still crowded, but I didn't see Veronica. I was a good ways away from the entrance doors, and I started to walk over to them. But that's when I noticed that the same guy that I had seen multiple times before was right there. He was standing right by the entrance and kind of looking around. Then, when he made eye contact with me for a brief moment, he walked behind one of the doors. I started to get suspicious, and I decided that I was just going to leave. But I was going to leave in a different door than that one. I began walking in the opposite direction. When I did, I noticed the guy then start to walk through the food court towards me. I picked up the pace and turned a corner to another hallway. I walked quickly and did make it to the exit. I didn't see the man behind me when I made it there. After that, I walked around the mall on the outside until I made it to the parking lot that I had parked in. Then I drove home. By the time I was home, I looked and saw that I had a message from Veronica. The message said, why didn't you come to the food court entrance like I asked? Why did you just leave? By this time, I knew that Veronica likely didn't exist and the one guy that I saw was running the account. I asked her to send me a picture of herself right now. Then, she blocked me. That pretty much confirmed my suspicions. I was disappointed, obviously, but I also felt good that I wasn't a victim to anything further than being catfished. From that point forward, I was much more careful with who I talked to online. I'm a female, and a couple of years back, I had a pretty scary experience from Facebook. Back then, I had just recently graduated from high school. I think it was during the summer, and I was living at home with my parents. I went on Facebook here and there, but not all the time. Not nearly as much as I use other apps like Snapchat or Instagram. I also had my Facebook linked with my Instagram, so when I posted on Instagram, it would automatically post to Facebook. I remember that I didn't go on Facebook for several weeks in a row. The notifications were turned off because I found it annoying how I would get all these random notifications from Facebook that didn't really concern me, like it was so-and-so's birthday or stuff like that. When I went back on it for the first time in a while, I found that I had many missed notifications. For starters, I had about five friend requests. Then, I had posted a few pictures on Instagram which automatically went to Facebook. I had a lot of likes from friends and a few comments as well. I went on and replied to a few comments and accepted the friend requests. But as I was looking, I saw a comment from a guy that I didn't recognize. He commented something sort of creepy on one of my pictures. I think he said something like, You're so beautiful, I wish you were mine. This creeped me out and made me cringe just reading it. But even more so because the guy in the picture looked to be much, much older than me. He had white hair and a ponytail, a slight beard, and glasses. I then saw that he had commented on my other pictures as well, and those comments were just as bad. He even went so far as to comment on some of my really old posts that were from years ago. I clicked on his profile, and he wasn't even my friend. I don't think I remembered receiving a friend request from him either. 
I deleted all of his comments, and then I blocked the guy. After that, I changed the settings on my profile so that only friends could see most of my information and posts. This made me feel a lot better, and I thought that would be the end of things with him. But sadly, it wasn't. It was like two days later, and I was home by myself while my parents were at work. There was suddenly a knock at the front door. I casually walked into the living room and looked out our front window. I was expecting to see a delivery driver like UPS or Amazon, but instead saw some guy. I quickly recognized him as the same man that had commented on my Facebook. This shocked me. I had no idea that he would have even lived in the area. I had figured this guy was probably halfway across the country. As I stood there staring at him in my living room, he turned his head and then saw me. We made eye contact for a brief moment and then I ran away out of the room. I went to my bedroom and called my mom telling her what was happening. As I was on the phone with her, I heard the guy knocking again on the front door. My mom told me that if the guy wasn't gone by now, to call the police on him. I stuck my head out of my bedroom and listened. I didn't hear anything more, so I went into the hallway. I then made my way towards the living room, but was very careful. However, as soon as I was in the living room, I saw the guy standing right outside the front living room window, looking in. He saw me again, and gave me an extremely creepy smile and wave. I then ran back out of the room and called the police. I told them that there was a creepy guy stalking me and he wouldn't leave our yard. They assured me that somebody would be at our house within probably 5 to 10 minutes. I got off the call with the police, and I started to feel better. I wasn't hearing any sounds, and I knew that the police would be there shortly. Maybe two minutes went by, and I was considering leaving my bedroom to check if the guy was still there again. But that's when I heard a knock at my bedroom window, just a few feet behind me. I wasn't facing it, and I turned around to see the guy right there staring at me. I screamed and ran out of the room. I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I didn't leave until I heard more knocking coming from the front door and the sound of somebody saying police. Then I left and carefully went back into the living room. Thankfully the police were there and I let them inside. They had found the guy trying to get inside the back door of our house and he was arrested. I was relieved to hear that and I was never bothered by him again.